This episode is brought to you by Novello Mattresses, where comfort meets innovation, giving you the perfect night's sleep you've been dreaming of. Are you tired of tossing and turning all night, struggling to find a comfortable position? Look no further than Novilla Mattresses, the ultimate sleep solution designed with your comfort in mind. Experience the luxury of a good night's sleep with Novilla's advanced mattress technology. Their mattresses are crafted using the finest materials, providing the perfect balance of support and softness. Whether you prefer a plush feel or a firmer surface, Novilla has a mattress that caters to your unique sleep preference. But what sets Novilla apart from the rest? It's their commitment to innovation and and quality. Each mattress is thoughtfully engineered to provide optimal spinal alignment, reducing pressure points, and ensuring you wake up feeling refreshed and rejuvenated every morning. Say goodbye to restless nights and hello to blissful sleep with Novilla's cutting-edge cooling technology. Their mattresses are designed to regulate temperature, keeping you cool and comfortable throughout the night. No more waking up in a sweat, just pure, uninterrupted sleep. Worried about allergens and dust mites? Don't be. Novilla mattresses are hypoallergenic and resistant to common allergens, ensuring a healthier sleep environment for you and your loved ones. And here's the best part. Novilla is committed to affordability. They believe that everyone deserves a great night's sleep without breaking the bank. That's why their mattresses are competitively priced, giving you the best value for your money. But don't just take our word for it. Join the thousands of satisfied customers who have already made the switch to Novilla. Even when your mom comes to my place, just know she's getting a great night's sleep, among other things. <laughs> Experience the difference for yourself and discover what it truly means to sleep like you've never slept before. Using promo code SHWEEZY or the link in our description, you can save 10% off any purchase you make through Novilla directly. Ready to transform your sleep experience? Visit their website today and choose the Novilla mattress that suits your needs. Your journey to a better night's sleep starts now with Novilla mattresses. And a reminder, when you use our links, you directly support this show. When you want it the most, there's no easy way out. When you're ready to go and your heart's left in doubt, don't give up on your faith, but come to those who believe it. And that's the way it is. That's the way it is. Hello, and what is going on? My fellow Schwoke Lords, what is up? Welcome back to yet another episode of Cancel Sweezy, the Lord's trademark favorite podcast. How's everyone doing today? It has been funny. I'm, I'm still on spring break. It's a earlier recorded episode. I'm leaving town this weekend. So the, my usual, my usual record, the usual record day, because I like to have this show be more pretty. It's a it's a complex thing because like you want you would love to record a bunch of episodes in advance, but also I like to do the news, which is always a problem. Um, a lot of times, if I can, whenever I start touring again, uh, I think I mean general idea is the show's gonna have to change a little bit, uh, which we may have to cut out the news segment or do something fun with it, but uh, so, or do something a little different with it. But no, it's a pre-recorded episode. It's March. 14th when I'm recording this episode. Uh, so hopefully nothing else gets um, goes gets out of hand. Oh, the other two segments were recorded like the same day I recorded last week's episode. So this part is fresh. The other part's from like four days ago. So, uh, oh, that's it. So that's cool. Um, but yeah, why am I out of town? You may be asking for St. Patrick's Day. Uh, the answer I can give you, <laughs> the answer I should give you, is I am seeing one of my old time, long dear friends. You can't have best friends when you're an adult, when you're a grown man. You just have a bunch of dear friends. I think dear friends are good friends. You just have a group group of guys and girls that you just consider dear. I don't know if John Mayer said, Andy, what was it that Andy, whatever of uh, E News, he's a. Uh, a dear friend because it's weird to have yeah it's weird as a guy and it's weird to have just like one best friend because it's like you need like multiple different relationships in your life to like to ease it out i know for one thing i've i've kind of learned is that men and women even non-binary people like there's there's something to it where it's good to surround yourself with both men and women and some non-binary people too uh, anyone else is kind of I can't speak for them, but I think it's really good 
to have, you know, that different type. Because women really help men, non-binary people help men and women, you know. We'll just leave them out for a start. Sorry if you're in that category. But, you know, women help men and men help women. And it's, like, in their own crazy, unique way. Like, women will be like, if you're sick or something like that or really injured, women will be the ones to get you, tell you to go to the doctor and actually get you there. For, like, you know, and then men help women out, you know, in... Uh, like say like, oh, I noticed your car was doing something weird, so I went ahead and got it fixed for. Or I went ahead and fixed it for you, you know, like, cause like a woman's, you know, cause like men and women are so different, and you know, I'm not saying we're different as in we can't do the same things, you know, I hate that idea, but like different in ways that our life perspective is so different from each other that it's good, you know, it's good to have someone with those experiences helpful to you and in your tribe and helpful to you. And then it's good, you know, vice versa. And, you know, you can be non-binary and it's good. You know, even, you know, you notice gay couples, they have a lot of friends of the opposite gender too. You know, like we all know gay men have lady friends, you know, and so like that. And that's, you know, it helps balance. It helps keep us balanced as human beings. Be balanced. So surround yourselves with all the genders and it makes you a better person because they see the world differently from you. That's education today, folks. But no, back to back to it. Uh, see my dear friend. Uh, I've known him since, I've had to be like 11 or 12, and he's like a year older than me, age-wise. He was like two grades above me. I don't know, I'm an August birthday, so you know, you, you're on that weird cutoff line, you know? Uh, and so, yeah, and now, I've known this guy for like over two decades at this point, you know? And he has a baby now. And, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't have friends you've known forever and then have kids, you know. It's usually like you meet someone, then they have a kid, you know, like in a, sh- in a shortish period of time. But, like, it's weird when, like, your decades-long friends are, are there. What do they say? If, for men, if you've had a friend for over 10 years, that means you are gay. Remember that. Um, but no, it's crazy that he has a kid now, which, like, eight-month-old baby, peak baby age, Okay newborns, little too fragile. Some of them can be cute, but like they're a little too fragile. It's kind of like, it's kind of like a teacup pig, you know? It's like, you got to be gentle with it. And then like around six months, six months to whenever they start walking, peak baby age, okay? That is when your baby is perfect. So if you have a baby between six months who's at least six months old and also is not walking yet, that's perfect. Because once they start walking, it just gets, becomes hell. That's when it all starts, people. Don't teach your babies how to walk, okay? I want to. I, I just want a bunch of little babies running around everywhere, you know? You know, because six months old is good. Because, like, well, th- there is a period where they, like, feel uncomfortable. They start realizing who other people are and get uncomfortable with them. I don't like it then. Like, stop crying, baby. You don't have any problems. <laughs> What's your problem? You're hungry. Like, you know, it's okay when babies cry for, like, you know, they're hungry, they need change, actually need something, but, like, other times, like, shut the fuck up, baby. Uh, no, I've not met this baby yet. I'm expecting a firm fucking handshake from this baby, though. Very firm. I want a firm grasp. I want to see if my friend is raising his child correctly, at least in my standards, you know? Firm handshake when you meet someone you know, please and thank you. Maybe get a couple sirs in there. I'll teach her. Her first word's going to be like, sir. <laughs> excuse me, sir. That, that, excuse me, sir. I hate being called sir. You know, I, I joke about it, but, you know, the kid calls me sir. I'm like, see, that's the kind of respect I like, you know. <laughs> and then, then, you know, that's what I do. But no, I'm excited to meet the baby. I got her. This is how it comes out after I see them. I got them. Uh, Poke, like, I heard a big ass, like, well, it's like, mm, let's see, how, how big would I describe it for the people listening? It's, uh, it's, uh, b- bigger than the baby. It, let's say that it's about as big as the baby. And so, a little Pikachu stuff, you know, razor right, you know, usually Poke parents like to set out the, you know, Charmander, Charmander, Venus, no, Venus, Bulbasaur, and Squirtle out there and then let the baby crawl and pick one. I'm going to give her the Pokemon Yellow treatment and just give her a Pikachu, <laughs> you know? Uh, as, uh, as we got Gengar up here, you know, get Cup Gengar. Nobody puts Gengar in a cup. <laughs> but I did. Actually, the reason why I 
uh, I, this cup is not being used for things is because uh, the main reason is because it was a gift from my friends in Japan. Also, uh, Gengar is misspelled in English on it, which makes it more cool to me. Uh, and I can't read it, so I don't know if it's machine washable or not. So it's just decoration now. Uh, back to the, back to the baby. First of all, you're gonna be hearing they're gonna be hearing this all weekend. You gotta see the baby. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna be just fucking. I gotta see the baby. You gotta see the baby. <laughs> you know, because uh, I gotta I gotta get some Seinfeld references. Then, you know. <laughs> But I love, I, I've added a couple. I'm going to add another one soon. Show you one of the other new sound drops. Um, I think what's important, you know, with me meeting, you know, my, you know, my friend's children, you know, it, it's crazy to think I have, I have like friends I've had just forever and they have kids now. And it, it's crazy to think that there's so much of their parents' lives they don't know. And I think it's important to tell kids about, your life and all your little stories, especially when you get old, they get older, you got to tell them the fun stories, you know, when they're old enough to hear it, you know, you got to hear the fun stories, but really, uh, it's time to go into a Midwest emo intro rant. Um, it's important that we teach our babies. <laughs> Fucking love this. It's important to teach the babies the lore of who their parents are. And I also heard that babies like it when you talk to them. So I, I think it's important that, uh, you, you, yeah, apparently you need to talk to babies. You know, they can't talk back, but they're also probably just bored all the time because <laughs> they're babies. And so, you know, you gotta, you gotta tell them some stories. And, uh, she may only be like eight months old, but I feel like there's a lot of cool lore that the baby should know about. Um, you know, you gotta, well, not about their, not too much about their parents. I think it's about the people. We used to, the crazy people we used to interact with, because I think we, we met at church camp, and so, uh, me and evangelicals means you can probably meet a ton of weird-ass people. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's one guy, um, I won't say his name on this show, but you could probably, you know, if you know stereotypes of guys, you might be able to guess it. Um, he, big metalhead, um, and if you know any metalheads, I don't know why all metalheads are like this, but they all smell. Why? Is every, every time you want to see a hardcore show or a metal show, you get in the crowd and it just stinks like crazy. It's only guys there, you know, and there's not a lot of girls. There are girls who listen to metal, but like few and far between, you know, it's it's majorly a, a man's genre of music. And that's why I always suggest everyone going into music that if you like we do try to play in music genres that women enjoy, you know, because it's good to have women show up to your show because that means guys show up to your it's it's a whole process but uh this guy uh smelled uh he was homeschooled he had he had in being homeschooled he didn't really respect people's personal space so he'd just like go into everyone's stuff and whatever uh one time he one time him and the other friend had a weird fight yeah they had a fight or something and he left like this really weird note that i always send him in copy pastas. I'll probably leave him that note before I leave too, you know, just to make sure he knows uh, what's up uh, and stuff like that. But there's guys like that, you know, I remember one time we asked him like, how many showers have you taken this week? And he said, well, yesterday we went to the pool, which I had to object and say, that doesn't count. Uh, pools do not, going swimming does not count as a shower, everyone. And, uh, yeah, there's another guy, uh, who that, that guy walked in on naked. He was a smelly, he was also a smelly guy and really kind of gross. He had a little SUV he used to drive around and uh, it was trash everywhere. And, uh, you could look at it and you could tell what it smelled like. And you were hundred percent right what it smelled like. Cause I have smelled it and it was, uh, crazy. And then there was, uh, one time, uh, one guy we found, porn on his iPod classic and what kind of porn were you asking because that's the that's the what I'm really concerned about it's just a close-up of a chick's vagina or of a chick fingering her vagina which uh is weird I like to see the whole woman not just the, the private parts I don't know I'm weird like that and, and stuff like that but for me it's important that I tell the future generations 
about the cringy people we've met along the way because that is funny shit. We can stop the music now. Okay. Um, <laughs> there's no way to transition out of that. <laughs> None of the music. Uh, but no, everyone, uh, if you're ever friend with a baby, tell them stories about that, especially when they're babies and they won't remember the dirty details of the story. It's important to that. Um, yeah, so uh, for all these out there, uh, check out my music under Shweezy. It'll be under... That's like the name of the show. Cancel Shweezy. It's weird now that the music's gone. Now I just have <laughs> in the background. Uh, what the fuck's up, um, so make sure you check out my music out there. Social media is at the Shweezy. So if you ever want to follow me on every social media platform, I I set it up so I'm on every platform. So uh, definitely, what I'd like to say is cool stuff, slick stuff, neat stuff. Uh, Cash App, Patreon, PayPal are all financial ways to support the show and say thank you for being a friend. So make sure you check that out as well. Um, because you can financially support me and it's basically supporting me, my music, the show, everything I do. So thank you so much for everyone who does that already. But if you want to know all the free shit you can do, make sure that, uh, if you're listening to the show, go check out our YouTube page. We're trying to, uh, build up our viewership over there. So, uh, you know, if you need to listen, obviously just listen to the show if you're driving or whatever. But, you know, if you have an Apple TV or something or a Roku TV, you can just pop me up on the TV if you want to do chores around the house or Stuff like that. Leave us a comment, too. Uh, it's good for the algorithm. Uh, like, you know, like what you like. That's good for the algorithm. So do stuff that helps us out with the algorithm. If you're on an audio platform, uh, like I said uh, in the last couple of weeks, that if you use Apple Podcasts, just remember that after 15 days of not listening to the show, they unsubscribe you and delete it from your feed. So make sure you're kind of keeping up with that. I know it's a, it's stupid, but just, just keep up with it. I know it takes 15 days to listen to podcasts, so... But uh, also leave a review. Give us a five, four, three, two, or one star rating. So, <laughs> got <he. laughs> All right, let's jump into previous week right now. Previous week right now. Usually the segment is last week's news that we're going over this week. But since I'm recording this on March 14th, I'm, some stuff might be off. So please forgive me if something cool happens and I am missed it or any updates happen. We'll get to the updates. Uh, episode 169. Uh, you bet I'm coming up in May. Uh, so definitely hang that up. So we'll call this segment current week, next week, right now. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Uh, this first article we got here is from WTOP News or WTOP News. I'm not sure. Uh, DC's first non-alcoholic liquor store is open. The growing non-alcoholic beverage industry has led stores that sell beer, wine, and liquor to start stocking up on non-alcoholic beverages. But now DC's first and only store that sells exclusively non-alcoholic drinks is up and running at Union Market on a temporary basis, though this is a test run for a permanent store in the future. Daryl Collins said that's because he believes there's a market for it. He owns Hopscotch Bottle shop, a non-alcoholic liquor store in Baltimore's Fell Point neighborhood. It's been great. People have driven from Annapolis, Pennsylvania, D.C., Columbia, kind of all over to come to the shop, said Collins, as he prepared his pop-up, or in his case, hop-up store to open in Union Market. People were coming up and they'd say, hey, when are you going to come down? So we figured, hey, we're going to do a hop up here at Union Market, kind of try it out and see how it goes before we actually focus in a location down here. What stands out to him is that there isn't a store already in his in his in the D.C. area. In 2022, there was $11 million in billion dollars in non-alcoholic beverages sales. He said in 2023, the figure climbed to $13 billion, a 20% increase. Name another industry that has up to a 20% increase in one year, Colin said. There are people who don't drink for multiple reasons, whether they're pregnant, whether they're focused on wellness, whether they're sober, he said. People don't drink for a variety of reasons, and for some reason, it seems that people are not stocking it here in D.C., so we thought we will come down and share the these options with our friends down here in the district. Hopscotch has a wide variety of non-alcoholic beer options, whether it's stouts, sours, IPAs, you name it, to go with wines and spirits, including rum, tequila, and bourbon. Most of the time, the spirits are made for mixing into cocktails, not drinking straight, and customers can sample some of the wines and spirits before they buy a bottle so they know they'll like it. People will say, well, that's the point of drinking a non what's the point of drinking a non-alcoholic beverage? But not everyone drinks to get drunk, said Collins, who himself says he drinks alcoholic beverages sometimes. Many 
many of us drink because we like the taste of something, right? I have more of a balance he's added, and that is our model that life is about balance. Hopscotch is guaranteed to open for at least a week from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. during the week and 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. during the weekends, and he said the pop-ups... Pop-up hours are likely to be extended beyond the fat first week if sales go well, at least until he can find a permanent store. If people want a store here in the district, said Collins, we're definitely looking and willing to provide a store here in the district. You know, this is this is like a weird topic. First of all, I want to say here, if you're a sober individual who's had a problem with drinking, you know, I'm not here to call you out. I work, you know, I work in the music industry, so it's not uncommon for for to meet people who have had some sort of drinking problem because like when you when the music industry like you play gigs at bars and you know you're surrounded by it and what is everyone doing at a bar drinking and that's the point of a bar but you're the entertainment at a bar so it's you know it's weird you know like can i have one drink it was one drink you know lead to more drinks you know it, it you know it's a common problem for people who are alcoholics so i, I understand the you know the need to not drink but however my thoughts on it are, like, isn't part of what makes these drinks good the alcohol, you know, because they make you feel good? That's why people like going out to drink, because it loosens you up, you, you can and have fun, you know? And especially when you can do it in, a, in an appropriate style, you know? Like, moderation and stuff like that, you know? It's fine, but, like, yeah, I understand why people, some people are like, I just have to go cold turkey, no alcohol or whatever, you know? But, like, I feel like the, like, non-alcoholic beer and stuff like that, you know, it doesn't really make a point. First of all, a virgin rum and Coke is just a Coca-Cola, my brother. So, you know, it's like, is this guy just selling, it's like, it makes more sense to just call this, like, a soda shop that, you know, serves not all, you know, they could put a sign like, no alcoholic beverages sold or stuff like that. And, you know, you could, you know, go in and, Get yourself a fucking non-alcoholic rum and coke, which is like rum flavoring, which I don't think, you know, I feel like some of the best parts of, you know, the alcohol is the alcohol part. Like, you know, it's like the mixer is the good taste and then the alcohol is really just there uh, to make people less anxious, you know? <laughs> like that's, you know, I like, I just feel like it's better just to go cold turkey than to drink like a non-alcoholic beer because I've had thoughts of killing myself. Don't worry, I'm fine, I'm not thinking about anything i'm just i'm saying i've had those thoughts you know before not what it's not like killing myself it's more like not wanting to be alive you know and that's the the feeling i would assume a non-alcoholic beer tastes like you know and also I, i'm kind of in the mindset like if you like are you getting drunk who's getting drunk off one beer like i understand like some of these people have problems but like i feel like you know one or two beers is okay like you know like I don't know, I'm not, like, I'm not an AA or anything like that, you know, but, you know, I just like, feel like, you know, if you've had an alcohol problem, beer's not gonna, you know, because, like, at my worst, I tested out, like, how many beers will it take for me, and it was a whole 12-pack, so, like, you know, like, light beer, like, I know a good beer, you know, like, a nice, good beer, like, they say they make, you know, like, you can have one and feel satisfied, you know, you know, so that's why you get a good beer, because you're just gonna drink one, and you want it to be a pretty good experience, but... I don't know, and especially when I see band guys, I'm just like, don't drink a non-alcoholic beer on stage. Like, that's why Liquid Death is so popular with uh, musicians, one, because it's water, and, you know, you need, it's good to stay hydrated, on, especially when you're performing music, because uh, you you sweat a lot. It's, it's very similar to, like, kind of similar to an athlete. Like, if you're a good, if you just stand there or sit down, like, plucking your string or whatever you're not doing too much, but, like, if you're really getting into it and trying to put on a show, like, you, yeah, you'll need to... Yeah, you'll need water and stuff like that. I always like to go. I always wished, like, in the South, they didn't have Powerades at McDonald's. I lo used to love going to McDonald's afterwards to get, like, like one of those breakfast sandwiches and then, like, maybe, like, a sausage McMuffin and then, like, a big-ass Powerade, you know? Like, after a show, I'm like, ah, oh, th those were the days. Um, But now, yeah, it's different now. It's just really, I, I don't know, like... If, if they have a market for it and people show up, you know, it's good. But I don't know. In my mind, it's kind of the marketing behind it. It's kind of like, why would we go to the non-alcoholic bar? Why would we go to the non-alcoholic liquor store? You know, like, it just feels like a soda shop after that, you know. I guess, you know, 
you can get mocktails and I don't know. I just like, I, it just kind of makes me feel like I want to end my life. You know, that's what it feel. That's what it would feel like. So it's an interesting industry. I'm curious about how it goes, but like, I'm just in my heart. I don't feel like it's going to last very long. And so I'd love for them to prove me wrong. No doubt. I'd love to be pro- proven wrong there, but, uh, you know what they say, um, Here's something to think about. When you drink alcohol... <laughs> I love that clip. All right, from IGN, uh, X-Men 97 creator Bo DeMeo fired ahead of show's premiere next week. This is pretty insane. Um, in an extremely unusual situation, X-Men 97 showrunner and executive producer Bo DeMeo has been fired just ahead of the series premiere on Disney Plus on March 20th. THR first reported today. IGN has confirmed with a source close to the situation that the THR report is accurate and that DeMeo and Marvel have indeed split ways. While splits between creatives and studios are far from uncommon, what's really odd here is the timing so close to the show's premiere. THR reports that DeMeo was previously lining up interviews and planning to attend X-Men 97's red carpet premiere in Hollywood tomorrow. According to the report, Marvel and DeMeo suddenly parted ways early last week when cast and crew were also informed of the decision. DeMeo's Instagram account were where he was actively sharing updates and communication with fans has also been deleted. IGN has learned that DeMeo has already completed his work on season one and two of X-Men 97, but will not be involved in the promotional campaign for either installment. A reason for the firing has not been revealed, but the subject will no doubt be a subject of question amid the show's upcoming press tour. IGN has reached out to Disney and DeMeo's reps for comments. DeMeo's relationship with Marvel Studios extended well beyond X-Men 97, having written for Disney Plus series Moon Knight as well as the long in-development new Blade film. Outside of Marvel, he has credits in The Witcher franchise too, having worked worked on the live-action Netflix show, as well as the animated film The Witcher Nightmare of the Wolves. X-Men 97, a continuation of the beloved 90s series X-Men the Animated Series, is still set to premiere with two episodes on Disney Plus next week. Disney revealed the full list of episode titles for season one last week. So, this, uh, so, it's not uncommon, you know, to see writers and creators, and he's technically, yeah, he was a writer, uh, yeah, he was like the head, uh, yeah, so he completed his work, but yeah, it's a weird timing, one, Disney slash, or more, more necessarily Marvel Studios is not catching a break, right, now. it's not, one, one, Secret Invasion, that was just god awful, everything after that was fine, you know, Echo was fine, uh, the Marvels was, I, it was a lot better than people think, it was just kind of, Edited, edit, you've clearly edited, and you could see the problems, but it still came out with a good product, I think. And I just think people don't like going to the movie theaters anymore because home entertainment systems and everything are just so good these days. It's kind of like, why would I go to the theater when I could wait? And like, they're, and then COVID kind of like, you know, everyone just kind of got on there. So it's a weird relationship now. Now it feels like, it, unless it's like a big movie that everyone needs to see, no one's going to the theater. So I think Deadpool. Deadpool and Wolverine's gonna do good, but like stuff like that. But this is not good, especially after uh one uh what's his face? Jonathan Majors, you know, that situation, which, you know, I I I think I don't think he's that good of a guy, but I don't I think the situation he he should have been right. That's my opinion, but um But uh, yeah, so that and so they're having to redo everything, their content, quality and content has been going down because they've been doing so many projects, and it's pretty much been, like, they've been spread thin, it looks like they're going to fix it, and they're going to come back, and by Secret Wars, I'm going to tell you, they're going to they're gonna nail the ending uh, of the multiverse saga, for sure, but, uh, yeah, usually you don't part ways with a, with something like this, especially when a premiere's coming up, what would probably have happened is, like, they may have fired him, but they still want him to go on press, and then he does the press, and then, like, a couple weeks after, probably a couple weeks later, you know, they're eventually going to realize they parted ways or something like that. So it's very odd that they're doing it right, it's right now and stuff like that. So something serious might have happened. Um, was it a disagreement? Like, the fact that DeMeo deleted everything could show that there was a big disagreement or something like that. But I don't know. So I want to keep up with this news, see what's going on, and see what the what the problem is, you know? Um you know, just, just see, just see, just see how it is, you know. Um, uh, last article we got here, Harrison Ford got a colonoscopy to the, to the Indiana Jones theme song. Follows me everywhere. 
uh, from the New York Post who does nothing but great articles. I've never seen anyone ever criticize the New York Post ever for any reason. Um, he just can't put it in his rearview mirror. Harrison Ford revealed that he can't escape the music of John Williams, who scored Ford's Indiana Jones and Star Wars movies, even during a certain delicate medical procedure. I've often reminded John his music follows me everywhere. I go, literally. Ford 81 said in a variety profile of the Indiana Jones theme song, when I had my last colonoscopy, they were playing it on the operating room speaker. Uh, Ford, who's a famous curmudgeon, also said that his admiration for Williams' music extends beyond the movies on which they're both associated. He said he sometimes goes to the recording studio to watch Williams as he conducts his lush scores. It's a delight to see him work with the orchestra, Ford told Variety. Oh, sorry. It's a delight to see him work with the orchestra. Ford told Variety, just the pleasure of being able to sit in a room and process the remarkable attention that each beat of the music gets. He added, and the musicians' respect for him and his respect for them is just so much fun to watch. Yeah, so first of all, I think we all know that this doctor is a bit of a goofball. And because if I was going to perform Harrison Ford's colonoscopy, all right, let's get going. Time for the colonoscopy play. Dun, 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 I don't know what they do in colonoscopy. I know they shove a camera up your ass, and then I think it's your ass. Is it your? I think it has to be your ass. And then, you know, they just look in there for polyps and shit, and you have to, like, really clean yourself out, too. Uh, so I'm like, I'm really like, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious, dude. Uh, and I feel like, I don't know. I've heard, it's always weird hearing about Harrison Ford because, like, in interviews and just in public, I'll be like, oh, I'm Harrison Ford, how are you doing? But then you hear about, like, John Boyega talks about working with him on The Force Awakens, and he's like, Dude, he was so excited to be there. And it's like, that would be fun, hanging out with, like, an excited, you know, like, ready-to-work Harrison Ford, you know? Like, just, like, a, an, ex, uh, an excited Harrison Ford. Like, that would be a treat to work with, especially as an actor, I would have to assume. Um, but, yeah, no. And also, yeah, the respect for John Williams. I think anyone who knows anything about music just respects him. Because, like, his scores for movies are just, it's crazy that he's just, like, yeah, I just made this up. <laughs> dun, 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 like, the way he writes music is just so iconic. Like, his music is just so iconic, and it's crazy. So, yeah, definitely, if you're, if you're in, like, the orchestra for John Williams and you're not being, like, respectful, I'd be like, get the fuck out, dude. Give it, give this position to someone who actually wants to be here, you know? I always think about that in music groups, too, because, like, it's like, yeah, I've been offered to join some groups and stuff like that, but at this, but I just, I've been in situations where I didn't want to be there in music groups and stuff like that, so I really try to control, like, you know, I understand I'm not going to play every song I've ever wanted to play ever, every show I play, you know, you play country stuff or whatever, but, you know, you got to, you know, you gotta show some respect, you know, you gotta show respect to John Williams, just, he's a living legend, and his son's in Toto, which, they're also way more underrated than you think they are, Toto's fucking rad, uh, and, uh, yeah, dun 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 cause apparently, John, they play this during Indiana Jones' colonoscopy, dun 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 I'm done. FNX Fitness, the ultimate destination for fitness enthusiasts looking to reach their peak performance and achieve their health goals. Are you tired of the same old fitness routines that leave you feeling uninspired and unmotivated? Look no further than FNX Fitness, where they bring a fresh and innovative approach to your fitness journey. At FNX Fitness, they believe that true fitness goes beyond just physical strength. It's about nourishing your body and mind and soul to unlock your full potential. That's why they offer a wide range of high-quality supplements and products designed to support your active lifestyle. Fuel your workouts and enhance your recovery with the scientifically formulated supplements. From pre-workout energizers to post-workout recovery blends, FNX Fitness has you covered every step of the way. Their products are carefully crafted using premium ingredients, ensuring you get the nutrients you need to perform at your best. 
but don't take. But FNX Fitness is more than just supplements. It's a community of like-minded individuals who share your passion for fitness and well-being. Join their supportive community and gain access to expert advice, workout tips, and motivational content that will keep you inspired and on track towards your goals. They understand that fitness is a personal journey, which is why they offer a wide range of products to cater to your individual needs. Whether you're a seasoned athlete looking to take your performance to the next level or a beginner taking your first steps towards a healthier lifestyle, FNX Fitness has the tools and resources to support you every step of the way. But don't just take my word for it. Join the thousands of satisfied customers who have already experienced the FNX Fitness difference. Transform your fitness routine and unlock your potent, full potential with FNX Fitness. And using our code in the description, you can save 15% off your order from their website. Ready to take your fitness to the next level? Uh, visit their website on your nearest or your, your nearest retailer today and discover the power of FNX Fitness. Elevate your performance, feel your passion, and become the best version of yourself with FNX Fitness. And a reminder, when you use our links, you deserve directly support this show. Cash App, the easiest way to send, spend, and save money with just a few taps on your phone. Are you tired of dealing with the hassle of carrying cash or waiting in long lines at the bank? With Cash App, you can say goodbye to those inconveniences and hello to a seamless financial experience. Sending money to friends and family has never been easier. Whether you're splitting the bill at dinner, paying your share of rent, or simply sending a birthday gift, Cash App lets you transfer money instantly directly from your bank account. No need to worry about writing checks or handling physical cash anymore. Uh, but Cash App doesn't stop there. It's complete financial ecosystem right at your fingertips. Use the app to easily pay for your morning coffee, groceries, or even your monthly subscriptions. With just a simple scan or tap, you can make purchases at millions of locations, both online and offline. And here's the best part. Cash App helps you save money too. With its innovative Boost feature, you can unlock exclusive discounts and cashback rewards at popular retailers, restaurants, and even your favorite services. It's like having your own personal saving assistant always looking out for the best deals. Worried about security? Cash App has you covered. With top-notch encryption and advanced security features, your financial information is always protected. Plus, if you have ever had any questions or concerns, Cash App's dedicated customer support team is available 24-7 to assist you. So why wait? Join millions of satisfied users and experience the convenience, speed, and savings that Cash App brings to your financial life. Download the app today from your app store and start sending spending and saving money like never before. Luckily, the best part is if you sign up using the link in the description, you get a free $5 just for signing up. That's literally just free money. Uh, so join Cash App today. The future of money is here. And when you use our links, you directly support this show. I was told. I was told that we should do another rain of topic generator. So... We're gonna do it again. Uh, the what do we do? How do how do we do this? Um, so basically, what I do is I go online. I use a random topic generator that only gives me one word, and then it's on the list. I don't look at it beforehand. I just have to go ahead and start talking. The first thing that comes to my mind, and what uh, whatever comes out comes out. So hopefully, nothing none of this gets edited. So we got them up here. Let's just, uh, as our friend would say. Let's just jump into it. Um, first one's parachuting. Okay. Parachuting is a weird thing. I don't think I'm ever going to do it or ever going to jump out of a plane skydive. Um, first of all, uh, I don't want to be attached to another dude. I don't know. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying it's gay, but I'm just saying I don't want to do it. Okay? <laughs> you know, I'm like, I'm, I'm not saying anything bad about it. You know, it's actually probably a good thing to have another guy with you uh, who probably knows what to do, you know? who's a professional at jumping out of planes, you know? Um, but yeah, for me, why I would, I don't know, why I'm a little hesitant is I have anxiety. And, you know, you, when I kind of have to, you kind of have to feel like if you're going to jump out of a plane and do it, you have to kind of go in the mindset of like the parachute might not open. You know, you have to realize that fact. So we're gonna have this experiment. More than likely, it's gonna open. They usually, you know, you go to a good place. They'll they'll make sure you're good. But but like you know, still at the same time though, like accidents. You know, it's one of those you got to prepare for the worst. And uh, in my mind, I don't know. It's just I know I know the parachute will open. But like at the same time, that little that little. 1% in the back of my mind of the parachute not opening up. I saw a video on how to survive it. Uh, your legs are going to be broken. It's like you have to 
fall down in a way where like you land on your feet for like your legs first, your legs will break. <laughs> they were just like, <laughs> I watched the video. I was like, your legs will break. Okay, but you will survive. It's like somehow like your feet take the impact of it. And so like your vital organs, you don't, you know, aren't hit with the force. It's something weird like that. Um, but don't, this is not an advice. This is not the advice section. So do not take my word for that. Um, next one, carousels. I know they're fun for kids. They're like 50% of the time fun for kids. You ever just... Go watch, just like, next time you're in, like, the mall and you see a carousel, look at how many, like, if it looks like it's a busy day or whatever, look at how many kids are crying. Half, like, the kids are crying. They're dead. They're sitting on the fucking stationary horse, crying their eyes out. Dad's up next to them. Like, shut the fuck up, kid. It's, this is fun. We're having fun. Okay? Carousel, I'm like, fine. They don't really make those for adults, though. I think those are just roller coasters, but I think, yeah, Carousel is supposed to be, like, for kids, and, like, your goes a little up and down very gently, and you're like, oh, I'm riding the horse, whoopee! I think mostly I know Carousels. I just think about, like, songs. I'm like, what's what band is a song called Carousel? I think Frank Ocean, he either, it was not, not one of his songs. Maybe he was involved in it. He has a song about Carousels, but uh, he just spent going round and round. At a very slow pace. It's made for kids. And if your kids don't appreciate it, what do you do about with kids who don't appreciate shit like that? Um, never let them do anything fun ever again, I guess. Because apparently, if they're going to fucking cry the entire time we're doing this. My, hey, bud, put that behind you. Um, I don't, I don't want a fucking ungrateful kid. You know, it's like, we're having fun. I, play, I paid like $2 to be here. We're having fun! Because the brownie! <laughs> because the brownie! Oh, shit happens. Uh, same shit, different toilet or whatever they say. Tanning. Okay. Uh, tanning, like real tanning, is very bad for you. As every dermatologist I've ever watched remove a cyst from someone has told me. <laughs> I feel like if you know how to remove a cyst safely... And like barely, like barely any or no scar at all. I'm like, I feel like, I feel like I'd listen to their opinions on skincare. You know, I mean, a lot of them have like their own skincare brands, which are, I mean, it's all the same chemicals. So you just buy the worst case, buy a cheaper one, like from Walmart or whatever, because it's like it's the same. If they have the same ingredients, it doesn't matter. You know, uh, it's probably like something else just in a different bottle. You know. But, uh, yeah, tanning, like, basically what I've been told, and I think this is why I look so young, is that basically a uh, dermatologist, if you can do anything, anything, if you just had to do one thing to make sure, like, your skin's good, what should you do? They always say sunscreen, SPF 30 at least. Um, and I, you know, I've, I, have, I have acne problems. I have to, like, wash my face all the time, you know? And uh, after you wash your face, you know, it strips everything off your face. You have to put... You put, like, facial moisturizer that's actually made to be put on your face, and a lot of that stuff has, uh, look for, like, look for something that has, like, SPF 30 at least in it in, like, the facial moisturizer, then you're gonna, your face is gonna look, that's why I don't have any wrinkles yet, and I'm 30. I don't know why I don't have any gray hairs, but, like, I'm so blonde, it's kind of like, ain't, like, you're in, like, a weird light, is that gray? Is that, is that a gray hair? And I'm like, yeah, it doesn't look. Until, like, it starts looking obvious, I'm not going to... I don't think I have... I don't think I really have any. And I don't even know what I'm going to do once, like, it starts predominantly turning gray. Because I don't know if it's, this is a good color for, like, you know, that, like, nice... You know, a couple gray streaks, you know? You never know. But, like, no, tanning is really bad. Because basically what you're doing is just burning your skin. <laughs> That's all you're doing. <laughs> and, uh, like, I think... They do say, like, tanning beds are okay. I think if you have psoriasis. That's why I think Kim Kardashian has one. That's what Dr. Lee... Dr. Pimple Popper, Dr. Lee said, is that, like, well, she does have psoriasis, and tanning beds really do help out with that, like, you know, like, nice, gentle. But I think Kim does more spray tans, which is apparently the better option. I think now, as long as you, like, go very gently on it, like, a spray tan can look good. I think we've we finally got spray. There's no reason you need to be looking so fucking orange getting a spray tan. Donald Trump. Also, like, I don't, he's probably not going to have that much money anymore, but, like... I don't know, when you're like, when you're bragging about being rich, I'm like, you gotta have your look together, you know? 
It's like, if you have money, you can get yourself looking good, you know? That's a me thing. But no, like, tanning, like, is really, not like, people get skin cancer all the time, you know? And I don't want to, and, like, my, I really don't want to go to a doctor and be like, ah, oh, there's this weird mole on your back, or freckle on your back, or whatever, like, we're going to have to cut it out. I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't want that. So I'm just like, I'll just wear sunscreen. <laughs> and I don't mind being a little pale. It's not, it's not really that big of a problem. If I really want to put some, get a little bit of sun in me, I'll just get a spray tan. I've thought about it before, just like a little bit, but I don't know, you know, like then I have to buy a new concealer for my face or whatever. I just use it for touch-ups, you know? So that's, you know, it sounds like a whole ass mess, but yeah. If you really want to like, the real secrets to, from dermatologists, why I say of having younger looking skin, just wear... If you know you're going to be outside, wear sunscreen, or at least a minimum. I like to, my nose gets really bad, badly sunburned. So, like, using a facial moisturizer really helps me. And it gives you a little layer of protection, too, from other stuff, too. So, that's my advice to you. Uh, if you if you want to have a tan, just get a spray, a good spray tan, nice and gentle. Don't actually do real tanning, because that will just help you die. And that's why, you know, like, you know, you have your friends who work, like, they you know, they work outside and stuff like that, and they're always, like, tan and, like, like, yeah, their, their skin's all wrinkly. It looks like a ball sack, you know? So that's how you look good, folks. Wear sunscreen. Don't do tanning. If you're doing tanning, you got to do spray tans. So that's that's my advice to you. Next one, socialism. That's cool. This is going to be a cool topic of conversation. Everyone's going to love what I'm about to say. I know I know everyone's going to agree with everything. Socialism, I think socialism, the idea, you know, I think a lot of the mindset of a lot of these ideologies, like capitalism, socialism, uh, communism, stuff like that. I think they all have good points. Even if I'm like, I'm not super big capitalist, but I like the, uh, I like the idea of like, we take the ideas of capitalism. We take the ideas of socialism. We take the ideas of communism. We think about like, what's the actual good stuff here? And let's implement it. Like, I don't like having like, we're all, we're just capitalism. Like, I like the idea of, like, we mix a couple things in. You know, social programs are good. You know, like a lot of countries, the white ones especially, um, all have universal health care in my mind. And I think there's there's no reason why we need to make health care a, like, a sales type job, you know? It doesn't need to be a for-profit industry. That's not what the healthcare industry needs to be. And that's what, you, know, you talk to most doctors and nurses and medical professionals, that their goal is, you know, just to help people. They take the Hippocratic Oath and whatever, you know, and like their, you know, their job and their oath as, you know, medical professionals is to help people. And then you have a million people who just work on billing and stuff like that. So, you know, like social programs, like I think healthcare is good, you know, public libraries are good, you know, cops, you know, tell when they do good, they do good. Um, firefighters, that's a, you know, like, so good, idea, you mix good ideas in there. You know, capitalism has its, you know, it's good ideas too. It's like the idea that like you, your monetary value as a human being or like how much you can make, um, you should be able to like go there. So like my mind is like, I don't think I have a problem with billionaires. I think it's okay. Have be a billionaire. You know, I think it's good. You work for, like, I think Jeff Bezos really did work for Amazon and he really built it up himself as you know and you know he had other people help him too and they probably did more work than him but still like he built this thing from ground up like you saw his like day one is like a spray painted sign it's just sold books online you know it's just very vicious like so like yeah I think Jeff Bezos should be a billionaire I think the problem with stuff like that really comes down to how well are you treating the people you know below you like you know, you talk about Amazon workers aren't making enough money to be able to survive and stuff like that, but, like, Jeff Bezos is a billionaire. I'm like, you should, you can still pay your employees a livable wage and still be a billionaire. It's stuff like that. You just have to support your bottom line, which I think that's what a lot of billionaires don't do. And if they do that, and that's why people think they need to be taxed so much more. So it actually goes back into social programs, and that actually helps people. You know, that's the idea behind it, because they're not doing it. We need to force them to do it, you know. And now, you know, trickle-down economics, like, if it's, if they do it actually what it's supposed to do, it's not a bad thing. Like, the boss makes more money, then you make more money, you know? You know, you think about it from the top down. <coughs> like, that makes sense. But the idea is, the boss makes more money, you make the same wage. You know, that's the, that's where the real problem is. So, you know, my idea is social... Do I want to be live in, like, a full-on socialist country? No. I want to live in a country that has, you know, 
does the capitalism idea. It's like, if you work hard, you make more money, you make more money, you know, you're better off. And, you know, the harder you work, the more money you make. That's the idea. And I think, you know, putting in hard work is a good thing, and you should be rewarded for putting in hard work. But you still got to support your bottom lines. You know, I think everything, you know, st- issues like socialism, communism, and stuff like that, the, they're very black and white. Situ- they're, they're very black and white ideologies, which cannot fully reflect the real world because, you know, we're in, we call it late stage capitalism where like we're seeing the negative effects of like how bad you, a place could be with capitalism. But, you know, you have communist countries and they show you how bad things can be with communists. You know, you have to have all these ideas kind of put together like a collage and get to work. That's my opinion. Um, smarter people than me have, have other ideas, but I don't think my, my general, uh, you know, my general idea, I'm like, you know, like, some of these ideas are good. We should use these good ideas and not use the bad ones, you know? It's always stuff like that. Tennis. No, on the next one. Uh, tennis is, tennis looks like a lot of work, you know? It's like, you're, like, running around hitting the ball. Every time I've tried to play tennis, it's just, like, my friends chuck the ball as hard as they can at me, and <laughs> I just miss it because I can't run that fast, you know? Uh, so... It's like that, so I never like playing it. My mom plays tennis with her friends, and, like, when the warmer months come around, like, it's, like, a, a, a once a week type of thing, and I'm like, all of you are in, like, your 60s. Like, how are you playing tennis once a week and not feeling it, feeling so horrible the rest of the week? Because if I think I played intent, like, even, like, normal tennis once, I'd be out probably for the rest, like, for at least a week and stuff like that. I don't know, so that's what it is. Interesting, but I can get I can I could watch some tennis. You know, I think the matches are can usually go by quick enough where it's not like super boring, and it's actually can be intense enough where it's it's better. Than, I'd rather watch tennis than football, to be honest with you, uh, because at least things move at a proper pace in tennis. You know, that's my opinion. Uh, but tennis is cool. I don't mind it. Uh, it's kind of a rich white people thing, but I don't know. I feel like I feel like if you're a different color, I think you can. I don't think anyone's probably don't go to like a white country club, but like a public place, you could probably be fine. And if someone's calling the cop, you want a public place when you're just playing tennis, like they're racist. Okay. Next one, cotton. All right. We're not going to talk about the obvious one. We're not going to talk about slaves and shit like that. Um, yeah. Wasn't there like, wasn't there like, wasn't it like a problem during like imperialism where like, you know, and there are other countries were going, you know, going to Africa and shit like that. And, like, instead of growing food that they could eat, they would grow, like, cotton or something similar to that, you know, that's not, like, a food. And, like, it, it was kind of bad for that area, you know, because then they're like, no, now we don't have food. Because, <laughs> like, you don't grow food. Then you're like, oh, now we don't have food. And I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Cotton's nice. Um, I don't really have a lot of opinions on cotton. Um but uh, I guess people. I guess they. Yeah, they have machines now to pick cotton, so you don't have to have people pick cotton anymore. So that's cool. Uh, I don't know that supply. I don't know. Uh, maybe maybe cotton. I wore cotton shirts. They're nice. They feel nice sometimes. I don't know. Number seven, artists. Okay, should we talk about artists as in? Let's talk about artists as in paint, which is a really cool, cool thing to do. But I always feel like with artists, it's like. You're, the value of your work is kind of to be determined thing, which is a kind of a scary fact because I know a lot of money, money laundering goes into art because it's so so easy because, like, what is the value of a painting, you know? And it's like a really good artist, you know? That's a lot, a lot of money, you know? Uh, a guy who just started out, maybe, like, you know, it's so... And art is always so subjective, too. Like, I think I played at an art gallery opening. It was really cool. All the paintings were really great, and I didn't have any problems with any of them. One was like a mermaid. It looked like a Lisa Frank painting, which I thought was cool. But uh, I love art. Like, I love going to see art, and I think it's really cool. I would definitely, and definitely I want to encourage everyone, if, like, if your options are an artist, especially a local artist who's not charging you too much for a painting, versus like going to Walmart or Target and getting some generic bullshit you know, art that they sell there, Go for, like, the real artist, because, one, you're going to get really cool stuff, and you can get a really cool painting, and, you know, you can browse around, you know, like, what they like or something like that, and if they have a painting you already like, you know, go for that. So, you know, always try to support artists directly if you can, too. Like, I know sometimes there are, like, in auctions and shit, and that's where the shady shit happens, but, uh, 
yeah, um, support your artists, um, especially always try to support. You know, it's weird because it's like, you know, you hear, you always see like local people talk about how no one supports local bands. I'm like, you should also try to make a good product too. This is for anyone in artistic field. I'm like, you should make a good product and, you know, then complain about it. Like, because a lot of these people like are in cover bands and they complain about like people don't appreciate their music. I'm like, you're playing cover music. The whole point of your job is to play music for people, songs they like, then you get paid for that. Like, that's your job. Like, don't act like you're, I mean, I think you're I think you're a real musician but like don't try to put yourself in the same category as like people working on original stuff. That's the thing. And I think that's where a lot of I always see local musician debates going on there like of the cover band guys versus the versus like the original music guys and you know the cover music guys they actually get paid for the music but then the artistic guys have integrity or at least putting some integrity and putting themselves out there. Interesting topics to talk about. Interesting discussions. A different way to live life. Um, number eight, newspapers. Our newspaper, like the actual physical medium of a newspaper. Like the only time I ever see anyone like read an actual read a newspaper were like boomers, you know, and stuff like that. Which is like, you know, they're they were in a time before the internet, so they're used to reading the newspaper and reading. That's how they get their information. You know, it's like you know, it's like it's weird that like a lot of like boomers are like, really need to have, like, their, like, at least have some sort of way to check the weather, you know, on the TV, because they're so, you know, so used to that, and it's just, nowadays, I just look it up on my phone, like, the weather, or, like, movie times, or anything like that, but a lot of, yeah, like, boomers are so used to that, and, you know, it's like, they've been doing it their whole life, like, why do they need to change, you know, and it's like, we're getting the same information, I'm just reading it on my phone, or my iPad, or my computer, you're reading it on a physical piece of paper, it's, you know, it's, it, we're reading the same thing, for the most part, except, uh, websites are filled with ads and aren't always accurate. Um, the guitar player in a band I play with, uh, he, you know, he, he's an older guy, so he reads the newspaper. And uh, another guy in the band uh, was always, like, looking for, like, a PRSSE type of guitar, not the Silver Sky, but, like, your, you know, your standard Paul Reed Smith design. And uh, the, the, the other guitar player, the guitar player in the band was, like, he saw it in the classifieds. Like, this old guy was just selling it because, I guess, he didn't, he just didn't need it. He could use the money from selling it, and he said he got a good deal on it. And it's like, I didn't know people still posted things in classifieds, but apparently they do. And sometimes you could look in those classifieds and find some cool things, especially music gear for me. In my mind, is like always try to buy like a used gear. I just bought a new bass, and it was like a scratch and dent from somewhere, and I bought an acoustic, and it was like the display model in the store. You know, a little that's been, you know, manhandled by people, but... uh yeah, I always like suggest you know used you know used music gear because a lot of times it's a, it still works just fine. It's just someone doesn't need it anymore. So that's how it is. So yeah, always check your newspapers for the classifieds because sometimes you can find some real treasures. Other times you, you can meet a sketchy friend. So also be careful. Number nine, fencing. Every time I see fencing, I always think, why must beekeepers fight? Because the brownie. Uh, they're not beekeepers, by the way. They look like they look. <laughs> it looks like beekeepers, but um, can you actually kill someone fencing? Like those swords don't seem like they could. I guess you could like stab someone, but like you know, unless they hit a vital, you could easily hit miss a vital organ too. Like if you get someone in the shoulder or whatever, like that top shoulder blade and stabs a little bit, like you can make it out of that fine. But yeah, fencing that's rich white people stuff. Like there, I wasn't. I never did fence. I, I don't even think. They had it. And also, I understand why kids shouldn't do fencing because uh, kids will get hurt. I, <laughs> sorry. You know, like, it's the idea of it, maybe Schrodinger's, Schroding, Schrodinger's cat. I'm sorry for saying that wrong. Uh, like, you know, it's like, in my mind, it's like the kids found, like, a megaphone. Like, I was substituting band. They found a megaphone. They used the megaphone for marching band practice. And, uh yeah, and I realized, I'm like, I'm going to put this away where the kids can't find it. Because if it's out, it's going to be used. Uh, you know, any, what can happen will happen. <laughs> so, you gotta, so, yeah, I think that's why fencing isn't super popular. It's, like, it's a rich white people thing because it's like, uh, yeah, because uh, in situations like that, it's like you can deny people access to things. And uh, I think that's pretty cool, denying people access to services, especially in retail. I think they should, I think retail workers should be like, I hate the idea the customer is always right because 
uh, you have store pol there's store policies, and if the customer's always right, then that means the customer can just leave with everything they want, you know, for free, you know? That's what it means when you say the customer is always right. So we need to stop having that mindset the customer's always right, especially in more stores. I'm like, yeah, if they're if I if I go to a gas station, they're out of Doritos, okay? And they don't have any Doritos in stock. Uh, nothing I'm going to do and nothing I can say, saying the customer is always right and when you don't have any Doritos, like, you know, the customer isn't always right. There's no Doritos. You, we do not have Doritos to sell to you, you know? Just random ass shit like that. And our last one, slavery. All right. That's, I think slavery is bad. I don't... I, <laughs> Crazy new, crazy new concept here. I think it's bad. I don't know. I've, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, and even that, like, just having someone do work for you with no reward, you know, I think, you know, I, I really do think, like, if you're going to provide a service for someone, uh, you know, like, w goods for services, and, like, that's, and that's all, obviously, how things work, and that's really why America was a capitalist country, because we had slavery, and that made things easier to be, it's easier to be a capitalist country when you have slaves. And then we decided, mm, you know what, I don't think slavery is that cool of a thing. And it took a lot of people to realize, it took a while to realize that. And most people, I would say, slavery, even like the racists you know today, like most of them would be like, yeah, I think slavery is wrong, but I think black people need to stand there. Like, Shut up. But, uh, you know, they're at least, at least we're, we're getting there. Like everyone's trying not to say they're not racist these days. So like that, but you know, it, it it's crazy that slavery, it took a while to realize slavery was wrong, and it's crazy the Bible is okay with slavery. I know it was a different time back then, but the fact that people still hold on to those texts as being sacred is pretty fucking insane that, that people think that way. So that's a random topic generator. What did you guys think? What did I say wrong? Please let me know in the comments, please, and thank you. Drizzly, the ultimate convenience for all your alcohol needs, delivered right to your doorstep. Tired of making last minute trips to the liquor store or dealing with crowded aisles and long checkout lines? With Drizzly, your favorite drinks are just a few taps away, making your alcohol shopping experience easier and more enjoyable than ever before. Drizzly brings the liquor store to you, offering an extensive selection of beer, wine, spirits, and more. Browse their vast catalog of top quality brands, local favorites, and specialty beverages, all conveniently organized on their user-friendly app or website. With Drizzly, there's no need to leave the comfort of your home. Simply choose your favorite drinks, place your order, and let their reliable delivery partners handle the rest. Whether you're hosting a party, relaxing after a long day, or simply stocking up for the weekend, Drizzly ensures that you drink your drinks are delivered promptly and securely. But Drizzly isn't just about convenience, it's about choice. Discover new flavors, explore unique craft brews, or find the perfect bottle of wine to complement your meal. With Drizzly's vast selection, you have the freedom to choose exactly what you want when you want it. Worried about the hassle of age verification? Drizzly has you covered. Their delivery partners are trained to ensure responsible alcohol delivery, making sure that only those of legal drinking age receive their orders. Your safety and the safety of your community is their top priority. Join the millions of satisfied customers who have already embraced the convenience and simplicity of Drizzly. Say goodbye to the hassle of traditional alcohol shopping and hello to the ease of having your favorite drinks delivered to your doorstep. That's not all. Using our link in the description gives you $5 off your first, first order, which can greatly enhance your night, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, ready to elevate your drinking experience? Download the Drizzly app or visit our website today and experience the future of alcohol shopping. Cheers to a new way of enjoying your favorite drinks with Drizzly. And remember, when you use our links, you directly support this show. Honey, your ultimate online shopping companion that saves you time and money effortlessly. Are you tired of endlessly searching for coupon codes or missing out on the best deals when shopping online? Say goodbye to those frustrations and hello to Honey, the free browser extension that revolutionizes your online shopping experience. Honey is your personal shopping assistant that automatically finds and applies the best coupon codes at checkout, helping you save money with just a few clicks. No more wasted time scouring the internet for discounts. Honey does the work for you, ensuring you never miss out on a great deal again. But Honey doesn't stop at coupon codes. 
it goes the extra mile to ensure you get the best price possible. With Honey's innovative price history feature, you can track the price changes of your favorite products over time. This means you'll always know if you're getting the best deal or if it's better to wait for a price drop. And the best part, Honey works seamlessly with over 30,000 online retailers, including popular brands across fashion, tech, home goods, and more. Whether you're shopping for a new wardrobe, upgrading your electronics, or sprucing up your living space, Honey has your back, ensuring you get the best value for your money. Worried about privacy and security? Rest assured, Honey is committed to protecting your personal information. They never sell or share your data, and their browser extension is designed with top-notch security measures to keep your online shopping experience safe and secure. Join the millions of satisfied users like me who have already saved millions of dollars with Honey. Download the Honey browser extension today and unlock a world of savings every time you shop online. Don't miss out on an incredible deal and the chance to save money effortlessly. Experience the power of Honey and take your online shopping to a whole new level. Honey, the sweetest way to shop online. And remember, when you use our links, you directly support this show. Oh no! Our table! It is time for Oh No, Our Table, the part of the podcast where I give you the best advice you've ever been given in your life from various types of situations. So, uh... Let's just jump into let's it. Let's see what's going on. What, what problem do you guys got today? A married woman is interested in me. Um, I've started a new job and have become close with a female manager who is technically my superior. We share a birthday week and have gone out drinking a few times. Recently, she has been texting me late into the night, showing signs of interest, and even mentioned that she would be interested in me if she weren't my manager. She's married with a child, but has hinted that her marriage is open due to her husband's sexual issues. I'm attracted to her and enjoy the attention, but I'm hesitant to pursue anything because of our work relationship and her marriage. I've considered taking talking to her about the sexual tension between us and suggesting that we either maintain some distance or approach any potential involvement carefully and consciously. I know she's not a long-term prospect, but her behavior has made me think she might pursue someone else, if not me. So, yeah, I guess I, I, I saw a married woman and interested in you. And, I'm, and, you know, my initial thought is, like, that's a, that's a weird situation. So if... You know, I think we're gonna say, if you're a if you're a fella and you're and you're sowing your wild oats, uh, something you notice is there's married women who are in a very committed relationship, but you know, usually sometimes they want to be with you too, but they don't want to give up their relationship. Sometimes they don't tell you they're married and stuff like that. If you, if you ever in a situation where you hook up with someone and then afterwards you find out you're married, you did nothing wrong. Okay. The, you know, and especially, and this is for anyone else, if, like, your partner cheated on you or someone else, but they, that other person did not know, you got to let them off the hook, okay? Because if, you know, they didn't know, you know, if they knew, then then they have a bet, different decisions they have to make. If you know she's married and you're wanting to hook up, there's, like, there's a lot of questionable things. Like, one, you know, the, the golden rule, treat others the way you want to be treated. Would you, like, you know, someone else like that, you know? Would you willingly do that with someone else's wife you know you have to think about it like that um she she says she has an open marriage so i guess things are okay i guess they've had that conversation you know i'm not i wouldn't approve of it but i guess you know you're fine to hook up i think the problem in your situation comes down to she is your boss and you and so situations like that is the problem because she technically has authority over you at least in some sort of capacity she does have authority over you and that's an issue where it's a problem because if you're if you if you know mike bickle <coughs> sorry slipped out um then you would know that a lot, sometimes people who have authority over someone else take advantage of that for their own sexual gain and stuff like that and that's not right so yeah, uh, really, to be honest with you, unless, like, you can figure out a way for her to not be your manager and not have authority over you, you know, and if you can get into some sort of situation like that, I would say go for it, because obviously, uh, she's in an open marriage, so according to you, it's fine, and if, like, they're apparently not in an open marriage for some reason, you find out, like I said, you're fine, you gotta remember, you, you're fine, because that's what you were told, and she was, it, it's still her fault. I mean, it's still her fault. Like, you weren't the one, like, 
knowing she's married and trying to hook up with her anyways. You know, at least, you know, in a situation where they're, where they have a situation where they don't cheat on each other, you know. So, so yeah, um, I think in regard, you can hook up with her. I'm just saying it's bad now because she technically does have some authority over you and that is bad. So, that's why I would say don't do it because of that. But if you can figure it out another way, I feel like go for it after that. Because, but you also realize that yeah, this is not a long term candidate. Because if she's married and if like a woman's married and like I just want to have an open relationship, that means she wants to fuck other dudes, but she still wants to come home to that one man. And remember, fellas, you're always better than that. You're you shouldn't be someone's second choice. You should be someone's number one choice. Your your three inch pecker should uh, be what she's obsessed with. Okay, uh, maybe not. I don't know. I'm getting happier as I get older, not sadder. I thought that when people grow old, they become less happy than when they were kids. I'm 27, turning 28. Each year I've been growing older, my life has gotten better as a result. I've grown happier. I can see some signs my body is aging. Yes, but I don't care that much. I also don't feel the pressure to keep up with the trends anymore, which takes weight off my shoulders. It just feels odd to me because I always thought people grow unhappy as they get older. That is an interesting question, especially from now being older and looking back to when I was younger uh, and just realizing my mental health. Um, I think most situations where, like, you're not as happy, when you actually do get happier as an adult versus going the opposite direction is probably your home life wasn't always the best to begin with. I'm not saying, like, your parents were horrible and are god-awful or whatever, but sometimes it's just, like, certain people bring out the worst in you. I've realized that, and so I tend to stay away from both situations and people who are going to bring out the worst sides of me. And, you know, it's not always that easy, and especially when it's a family member, uh, it's definitely not easy because at some point, you know, like, you still see them and, like, you still want them to be in your life, but you would prefer that. So uh, in a lot of situations, yeah, um, sometimes you're just depressed and you have mental health problems and it's just, a weird chemical imbalance in your body. And, and then other times it's just like your current situation. And sometimes it's both. And so for me, most of the time it's both. And, uh, I got, I took care of the whole chemical imbalance thing. And so, which has really improved my life. I start taking medication for my anxiety and it's, it's really done wonders. I've been, I think we're getting close to the 10 year anniversary. And I got to say, I wouldn't go back on not being on it. I'm fine with, if I have to be on this stuff for the rest of my life, I'm fine if it just helps me live a better life. So like that. But then there's also, you know, your environment, your situation that you're in, you know. Uh, you know, maybe you are, like, in college and, you know, like, you, you hate your roommates or whatever. And they bring out the worst in you and they make you a bad person. Or you're surrounding yourself with bad people. A lot of people kind of figure out when they get older, you know, and when you get older, you should figure out, like, what in life puts me in a bad situation and makes me the worst version of myself, and I need to put myself in a position where I'm around people who make me a better person. So it's interesting. It's a lot of interesting situations, you know, and, you know, you don't get the choice, you know, in K through 12, you know, you don't always get the option. Like, you can't, not every kid's going to get the option. Like, go to a new school or be homeschooled or put, you know, if school's that bad situation, Like, they don't, you don't always have an option for, like, a better situation. Like, you know, if you're in a rural area and it's between, basically, your only options are public school and being homeschooled and your parents work full-time jobs and also pretty much having a homeschool kid means, like, you do have one stay-at-home parent, you know, at the same time. Like, you you don't always have that opportunity to put yourself in a better situation. But, you know, a lot of times, a lot of things you have to realize are temporary. Like, high school is temporary. School is temp like elementary school is temporary. And if you still want to go to college, like you can go far away to college and, you know, have, give yourself a nice start over and put your, in, you know, you know, starting fresh somewhere new is a great way to really start creating the environment. You like, you have to create it still. You have to create that environment, but it is a good way for you to create a better environment for you to be in and for one to thrive, become more happy and just become a better person. So, um, yeah, a lot of times just how people's situation, like they had, may have had the worst, a home that wasn't the best for them or they're in a school 
that was bad for them and they couldn't didn't really have any other options regarding to that. So yeah, if it's always good, it it shows that you're making progress in life when you're moving for like I'm getting happier as I get older. Like that's that's a good sign that you are making good decisions in your life and are moving in a good direction, if that's the case. Some people sometimes they're moving in the opposite direction and you really have to reevaluate what your life is and what does it say like maybe I have to go into a new career field and that stuff's not always easy to do so um yeah I think you know definitely always put yourself in an environment situations whatever you can uh to make yourself happier and a better person you know you don't always get those choices some things are temporary you know and stuff like that but you know you can always you know you always have that option to put yourself in a better environment. I mean, that's why there's so many fucking songs about California is because California used to be like this place you would go to and it'd be like, go there and then my life will change and my life will get better. You know, that's not always the case though. So you always have to put yourself in those mindsets and uh, make sure like if you, is it your, you always have to just double check. Like, was that my environment that made me feel bad? And now that's why I'm feeling so much better now. You know, I've, I've had situations where I've had a falling out with a friend and instead of feeling bad that we're no longer friends anymore, I actually just felt like a pressure of relief because it's just like, you know, without them, I think I'm really doing a lot better, you know? Like, they're not encouraging me to, you know, they're I'm around better people who encourage me to make better decisions, you know? That's how it is. I've been rambling on that one long enough. What makes you fall in love with a person? I think I talked about this last week, but uh, for me, apparently... I'm a, I apparently identify with people who are pansexual in in regards to attraction. I don't know. Like, I don't want to be like, I'm pansexual, but I only like women. You know, I don't want to be that asshole. But the way someone who's pansexual describes attraction to me, it's not necessarily like the gender or how they, well, how they look is an important part, but it's not necessarily that. It's like that you have like a pull towards them. Like there's something about them. It's not necessarily their looks, but like their personality, their vibe, their confidence, you know, that really draws me to someone. And that's really what draws me to someone. That's really how I fall in love with someone. It's just like, how, who are they? Who who are they as a person? You know, and you know, sometimes you need to make some better choice in your life to become that better person, but some people have it. And sometimes you have it, you don't know it, and you have it to someone else and, you know, and stuff like that. Really, there's like this feel for for me there's like this feel of someone like who they are and and you know in their appearances i think their appearance is also especially being a man like i think you know it's like just because a woman is beautiful doesn't really do that for me like i think sydney sweeney is amazing and i think she's a great every role i've seen her in i haven't seen that one yet but uh, every other role i've seen her in she does great she's very beautiful but for me i like i don't have that pull towards her, you know, if that makes sense, you know, it's like, I think she's really pretty, you know, but like, there's nothing like that makes me want to fall in love with her. I also don't know who she, I also have never met her in my life. So don't, I'm not saying Sydney Sweeney is like the worst person in the world, but like, you know, like I don't have that pull to her. I, I know she's attractive and I think she's very pretty. She's, but like, I don't have that pull towards her. Maybe just cause I don't know her in person, you know? I don't know. It's weird. Um, that, that was, that's kind of a com- complicated answer, but maybe to someone it'll, it'll make sense and you can find someone to, uh, you know... Uh, Feel like a woman, a real woman. You know. I have a crush on her, but her best friend has a crush on me. What should I do? Okay. Um, so her best friend... So you're kind of in a little tr- love triangle here. You're in love with her. She's in love with you. They're friends, and so that one can yeah. So the the thing is, like, I don't know if it's you. That would be the problem necessarily be the problem in the situation, because like, there's no like as far as I'm seeing from the one sentence you wrote me or the two sentences you wrote me, is that you like her, but you, not you don't know if she likes you, but her friend for sure likes you. 
And so, like, if you want to date her, like, you don't have any obligation to have to date her best friend at the same time. This is more an issue for the girl you have a crush on and her best friend. Like, you know, if it's like he likes her, but she likes him. And so it's I, it's kind of an issue between them. Um, all I can really tell you to do is don't give her best friend any false flags that you're interested in her, you know, make sure that like, you don't give any signs or any weird hints or whatever. Just be very mindful of that. And then just make sure, you know, kind of, kind of always point to, you have a crush on the girl you have a crush on and not her best friend. And, and the, there's a good chance that that might not work out too, because, you know, in my mind, if it's like me and uh, like my best friend, which all my, most of my friends are married. So that's not really a problem. But, like, if that was the case, I feel like, for me, I feel like, you know what? I think our friendship, your our friendship is more valuable than her. I think we need to both make an agreement that we need to stay. We need to both avoid her. And hopefully chemistry doesn't start somewhere else, you know? Like, that's, that's kind of the issue here. I feel like on your end, like, I just think just don't give her any false hope and uh, still show signs that you have a crush on her friend, not her. And just be be a very kind and gentle man, you know. Be a gentle man. That's 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 why we call him gentlemen, you know, gentlemen. <laughs> that's a reference that none of you will ever get, but it's funny only to me. I am not sure how to help my friend, my girlfriend, with her self esteem. My long distance girlfriend is quite uncomfortable with showing her in things like photos and video calls, despite me reassuring her that she there is nothing wrong with her and that I actually enjoy the times we do video calls or send a picture. We have been together for two years, but compliments don't really seem to help her convince thinking differently. I would really appreciate my advice about what else I could do or change. Okay, so I'm just going to give you the benefit of the doubt that you think that you're a youth pastor and she is your smoking hot wife. I'll give you, well, well, I'll pretend that's the situation. And you think there's nothing wrong with her. Well, I will just pretend that's the situation. But she has some self-esteem issues. So, um, one thing I like to do in situations like that, you know, it's kind of more actions speak louder than words, but you're still going to use words. So, <laughs> um, you know, you know, like those guys who like catcall women and sometimes they don't say the nicest thing. Like they don't say the most, uh, not nicest, appropriate things, you know, but like they're still kind of compliments, you know, it's like, damn girl, back that booty up, you know, like that's technically a compliment. It's kind of, it's kind of demeaning, but like also it's still a compliment. And at the end of the day, I think you might have a fat ass too. And that's awesome. So you know, if you know there's something, like, she's insecure about, but you don't have a problem with it, you know, bring in some compliments on it. You're like, you know, if you like her ass, you know, it's like, oh, no, stay turned around. I want to, I want to, I want to have, I want to have this view as long as I can, you know, like, when you go and be, visit each other and stuff like that. I'm like, I want to see this as nice as I can. And, uh, you know, you got to reaffirm with words. You're like, God damn, you're so hot. You know, it's like, God damn, you know, like, you just have to. You have to think, like, what compliments do you kind of want and what do you think women would actually want? And you have to say, and, like, obviously she likes you, so, you know, a lot of times uh, when you say some risky things, like, damn, girl, do you shit with that? At? You know, or a better one than that, but, you know, it's like, you got to make sure she's like, God damn, babe. I'm going to let all that ass, ass out without me eating it? You know, you have to, like, put in more compliments and be funny about it, but also be very compliment in like being like, and also if she's like, if she ever is like, no, I'm ugly. I'm like, are you, sometimes you can be a little bit meaner and be like, are you fucking stupid? <laughs> you know, I'm just like, God damn. What are you, what mirror are you looking into that you see yourself as ugly? I'm like, God damn. You know, you got to say like, maybe be a, it's like a little bit more aggressive, but in a kind way, you know, being like, damn girl. You know, you see girl, you know, she's wearing the right type of pants, you know, that really give that ass support, you know, or it's like, sorry, I had a hard, you know, like, you know, it's like, your boobs are so nice. Sorry, I had a hard, sorry, I, you know, she says something like, you know, that's not really important. I'm like, sorry, I had a hard time listening. Your jugs are so magnificent. You know, you just gotta like, you gotta, you gotta change up your compliment game. You're just like, you're so pretty, babe. I'm like, don't say it like that. You're gonna be like, you're gonna be like, ooh, damn girl, you're gonna really walk out like that. I'm gonna be worried, <laughs> you know? 
you got me worried about other guys. <laughs> you know, you gotta, you know, you gotta say it as like you're not worried, you're not, you're not insecure, but you're like, you know, you gotta compliment in a new way. And I think that'll really help her self esteem. You gotta figure out how to compliment her in a way that'll work. You know, and I think you know the way you're complimenting her probably doesn't work. So just just try a little different. You know, just you know, find the things you really like about her and just. Go a little overboard on it. Don't make her have to ask. Make her just always say it. Always never make her like insecure like that. You don't aren't attracted to her. Make sure it's like oh, he he will fuck me at any moment, whatever I look like. How it is? If you could stay one age forever, what would it be? I think I'd probably go with twenty five because twenty five. It's like you you know you can still run a car. You know you still have. You're basically. I feel like twenty five is like the real adult age is like you are an adult like 18 you're a legal adult you can be you know you can do legal things but like by the time you're 25 it's like rent a car car insurance price goes down you know it feels like you're a real adult at 25 you know and yeah and so it's like you're an adult but you're still young you know it's like a young adult like a real young adult who's like you know first five years like you kind of figured out who you are in this world and then you still have the rest of your life, all these opportunities to, uh, like, do all these other things, you know. 25 is a nice, age. I don't know, I think I turned 27 right before COVID hit, and then it was like, now I'm 30, I'm like, what happened? <laughs> you know, it's like, I feel like those three years, like, the last part of my 20s was, like, ripped from me, you know. And, you know, that sounds bad, but, like, a lot of kids were ripped from their high school experience, you know. it's You know, it's kind of, it was kind of rough, but... I don't know, 25, and I was also, I think, 2018, I was 25? 20, yeah, maybe. No, something like that, yeah. Um, something similar to that, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, 2018. Um, so, yeah, I think 25 is a good age for me. Uh, it's just, I feel like it's just, like, I'm an adult now. Like, you know, there's, like, all that shit you had to deal with when you were a kid. Like, I no longer have to deal with that anymore. But I can be an adult, like, and then when you're 25 and you have other friends who are near that age, like not everyone hasn't fully settled down with kids yet, you know? And so like, you still get to have fun, you know, like you saw friends and like a good, you know, like the show friends, the whole purpose of it was like that time in your life where your friends are basically your family before you have your own families and stuff like that. So yeah, I'd say if I could say one age, uh, I would stay, uh, 25, you know, this is the type of guy you get. And on to our last question, why do my cousins still, think I'm still a baby when I'm 22. Yeah, so I, you know, I have cousins. They were born, like, I was 93, and I think my other, I had another cousin, 95, and then I have cousin 92, 90, and my brother's 91. And so like that. They were born 99. So they were, like, we were all, like, little functioning kids, like, when they were born. So they've always been, like, my little cousins. But now um, I realized, uh, it was, like, a couple years ago, I realized, I'm like, oh, yeah, they're, grown adults too. They're like out of college working jobs, you know? And so I'm like, you know, they're born in 1999. So I'm like, now I'm like, you know, like they're not the little cousins anymore. And then my cousin has little kids. And so now I just refer to them as the my little cousins. Those are the little cousins. Now my former little cousins are just cousins. Now they've, they've gone up. So really if you, if you're the older cousin and you have young cousins, you know, eventually you need to realize they're not going to be the little baby cousins anymore. They're going to be a normal they're just soon gonna become cousins uh when they're still baby you know when they're actual babies and stuff like that you know while they're still young like they're your baby cousins but then eventually you have to you have to stop referring to them as your baby cousins and like you know i see the when i see them i'm like i always always remember you guys always being younger than us now like you know you get older and it's like I feel like ages it doesn't like ages feel more compact you know like the difference between a 15 and 17 year old versus a 25 and 27 year old is not you know is a big difference you know, when you become adults, it's kind of like, <clears throat> it's whatever. So, um, they still think you're a baby because that, I don't know, in their mind, that's how they see you because they were older and then you were a baby and they remember you as a baby. And so they refer to you that, but you know, you got to eventually realize that you can't be calling them that forever. So, um, yeah, so this is kind of a them like, Hey guys, I'm 22 now. I'm not a baby anymore. Let's, but like also that could be a little Streisand effect, you know, and then we're like, we're still going to call you the baby cousin, but, uh, just be like, all right, I'm not, you know, I, I had a, I have a cousin with the same first name as me and I was always the little, and I'm like, we we're six months apart in birth. Okay. 
we shouldn't have big and little in in this situation. You know, if it's like you, you're 15 and you know, somehow you have a cousin with you know the same you're, with the same name as you, like that's fine. But like that's a big difference. But like, but when they get older, you're like younger. You know, like younger. Johnny or like big Johnny and then young Johnny, older Johnny and then younger Johnny. You know, that's eventually, you know, you gotta, if you're the, if you're calling your cousins babies and they're fully at full grown adults, like you gotta, you gotta change things up. Like, you know, like my not so little cousins, maybe my not so little cousins anymore, you know, maybe change it to that. <laughs> Got <he. laughs> and with all that being said, thank you for listening to this episode of Cancel Schweezy, better known as the Lord's Trademark Favorite Podcast. Appreciate you guys finishing an episode out again. Hope you guys had a good St. Patrick's Day because this episode will have already come out by that point. So thank you so much for checking out social media at the Schweezy. Uh, make sure you follow me over there to keep updated with what I do. Uh, and then uh, Shweezy is my music, so go check that out. It's out wherever you stream your music at. It'd be cool. Uh, Cash App, Patreon, and PayPal, all great ways to say thank you for being a friend and financially supporting the show. But don't forget all the free shit you can do. Make sure if you're listening to the show only, go to our YouTube page. Really help us out with that algorithm over there and leave us comments and stuff like that. I always love to hear if I get something wrong. I actually like to see if I – then I have to research. I like to – I like to try to be accurate on most things, you know, that aren't jokes. You know, if some, I make a lot of jokes, so, you know. Um, but, like, obviously, if you're on an audio platform, make sure, um, one, if you're on Apple, make sure you're making sure um, you're still subscribed because after 15 days, they'll remove me from your feed. And I know it takes longer than 15 minutes to, or 15, I know it takes longer than 15 days to catch up on podcasts. I know. Uh, but, you know, share everything with all your friends. Leave a review. Give us a 543 tour one star rating. Honk if you love butt drugs. And. Stay awesome. Believe it or not, Schweg is in at home. Please leave a message at the beep. I must be out or I'd pick up the phone. Where could I be? Believe it or not, I'm not home. Thank you for tuning in to Cancel Shweezy, the Lord's trademark favorite podcast, and joining me on this incredible journey. I hope you've enjoyed the valuable insights and engaging discussion I brought to your ears. To ensure you never miss an episode, hit that subscribe button now. By subscribing, you'll receive automatic updates whenever we release new content, keeping you in the loop with the latest episodes and topics. Subscribing not only guarantees that you'll never miss a beat, but also helps support our show. Your subscription plays a crucial role in helping us continue to bring you high quality content and maintain our podcast growth. So whether you're listening on your favorite podcast platform or watching our YouTube channel, take a moment to click that subscribe button. Join our community of passionate listeners and be part of the journey. Personally, I appreciate your support, and together, we can make this podcast even better. So don't wait any longer. Hit that subscribe button now and stay connected with us. Thank you for being part of our podcast family.